meeting is being recorded. Got it. Oh, wow. Hello. So, um, so we will start with a conversation about foreshortening, what that is. And then we're going to work on a drawing of this. I'm drawing on canvas. You can choose to draw this on canvas or on paper. I think, Tilla, for you guys, since you don't have other paintings, we should do this on canvas and then paint it. Um, yeah. So but we always start our realistic drawing using, with a drawing using pencil. That's a very standard way. All right, so let's talk a little bit about foreshortening. Um, one of the things you probably noticed if you've tried to draw an animal, that it's very hard to get eyes and noses in the right place, that you're often making the wrong decisions about that. Um, and that's because there is a translation happening when you're going from three dimensions to two. Um, so you have a full surface and you wanna convey the illusion of depth. Um, the shapes change. In a very simplified way, this is what's happening here. I'm going to say In a very simple way, it's like what happens when you draw. Anybody ever do this in school? What is that? Stella, what is this? Um, uh, what's it called? Like a point. Um, I'm not uh, going to say the official term. What is it? That perspective, perspective drawing or? What is this thing that I have drawn? What is this? A road? No. Yes, it's a road, right? It's a road. It's a, not only a road, it's a road going away from us. Okay. And you'll notice that to learn to draw this road the way it looks with our vision on a flat surface, this road appears to be rising up. Right? And it's also smaller here and bigger here. Right? So the truth is that we know this road is the same size here as it is here, but it doesn't look that way when you're trying to draw it on two dimensions. What happens as things go away from us is that they rise up on the paper and they get smaller and narrower. So as you're drawing everything, everything that is, uh, every time you're dealing with something that has I mean, well, anytime you're trying to draw any object, whether it's a cup, a face, nose, a hand, a road, it's going to look different than you think it should, right? It's going to be a different shape than you think it should be when you're translating it from two dimensions, three dimensions to two. Does that make sense? Does that kind of like, she's poor. <laughs> she's locked in her bathroom. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Although That's apparently good. she's got like internet access. So for example, my nose you're experiencing as you're looking at it here. Let me pop this up so you can see it better. My nose you're experiencing a little foreshortening. When my arm is, oh, wait, let's do this one so you can see it better. When my arm is to the side, it's longer. When I move it this way, can you see what happens to the arm? What happens to the arm? It's short, it's gone. It's short and it kind of gets a little bit narrow and some parts get away, right? So as you're moving things around from plane to plane and they move away from you, there's a strange shape that you're not really expect. You got out, Anna. Yeah, oh my God. The lock came off and I was in the bathroom for like 20 minutes <laughs> trying to figure out because my flatmate is not in until late. But How'd luckily I found out? some tweezers. How'd you get I out? I tweezers and I had to like, uh, because the, the other part of the lock on the other side had gone like almost falling out, but I got tweezers and pulled it back in and then reconnected. You know what, what we a drama. Call, ooh, ooh. call that in the US? We have a word for that in the US. You MacGyvered it. 
Uh, yeah, that the I did. Is I that thought... TV show that like where the guy uses like, um, like like very simple objects, to like do. pair of socks, the rubber band, and maybe a screwdriver, right. and basically uh, the, yeah. uh, the disarms an atomic bomb with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He disarms an <laughs> atomic bomb with like a paper clip and a rubber band. Exactly. So you just MacGyvered it. Very nice. So. Yeah. Before we get started on that, can you guys understand how an animal nose and eyes might also, particularly a nose, might actually, ex you'd experience the same thing, meaning the shapes are going to be different than you think they are, right? Because it's coming towards you and we can't really see the length of it. So as we, so how do we handle that? <laughs> well, we handle that by learning to measure right by really paying attention to measuring and also by by relationship building so there's a couple of things i'm going to do the first thing i'm going to do is draw a kind of simple shape around the outside edge of these three things now i'm not just going to draw a random triangle my triangle has to be precise, meaning I've got to check. I'm wondering, I'm gonna check this side and see how tall it is related to this side. Oh, and the other thing I'm gonna do is draw a line down the middle. Maybe it should be a little bit over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is check the vertical distance of this triangle against the sides. Is the vertical distance bigger or smaller than the sides of the triangle? Bigger. The vertical distance? No. No, the horizontal distance is bigger. The vertical, distance, yes, the vertical distance is smaller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm going to start when I sketch the triangle. I'm going to make it, I'm just going to mark random vertical distance and draw it. Then I'm going to use that vertical distance and compare it to, I wonder if I did this here, even also maybe. Yeah, I think this would be helpful. This is the halfway point of the vertical distance. Let's see if that'll be helpful to us. So I come here and I measure with my pencil, not with the, not really with a, um, with a, with a, with a ruler, but with just something that shows me the spatial relationship, right? Numbers can get confusing here, so not necessarily. And then if I'm gonna measure this other half, it's almost to the halfway point. So how do I employ that? First, I draw my line all the way down. It can be as big or small as I want it to be. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to mark the halfway point. I'm doing this by guessing and checking. If you can see, I can mark the bottom from the halfway. I think the halfway point is. I can take the top of my pencil and take my finger to mark the bottom and then just move it up to see if it's the same size. I find this easier than using a ruler because numbers send you into right brain. And then you start getting, start kind of losing your mind a little bit. I also know that like this distance is one of these and one of these, one of these and one of these. When I come across like this, and come over the top 
and mark out. Just a little bit above the halfway point here. You can come over here. Is this a cat we know? Nope. Just one I found. So I can see. So when I come back here and check, I need to know. Oh, yeah. And then I should be able to use a straight edge of any kind. Here in the ruler, it doesn't matter. I'm not measuring, right? But I'm using a straight edge to meet here and here. And now I'm going to double check. Oh, did I get these lines right? I'm going to check and see. These should be shorter, actually. Yeah, these should be just a little bit longer. Your side, oh, mine feels like it should be lighter. A little bit. Your side should be if I measure this. My side should be well, actually, that was pretty good. Oh, I messed it up. <laughs> it was right the first time. By the way, notice that I'm making mistakes as I'm doing this. That's okay. It's a really normal part of doing art. Uh, those of you who've done this for a while know that I'm going to encourage you to make mistakes that I um, that I actually embrace making mistakes because doing this for the first time, the second time, the third time, even the tenth time can be tricky. Yeah, I can see that's about right. What I want to make sure is that my sides aren't as long as my width. They're a little bit shorter than my width. They're not the same size. So what I'd like you to do is sketch out this triangle and then send it to me on the thread. In fact, I will send this to you. I'll also send this to you. So you can get a sense of, I'm gonna turn this off for a second so I can send us a picture of this across the thread. I'm gonna send. This is what my chart looks like. Here is the source. Um, I'm thinking a lot about tediousness and boring things. Um, why? Because I think we have a misunderstanding of tedious or boring. This is kind of a tedious process, and that is quite simply why people don't do it, right? It's a tedious process. But if you learn how to measure, your drawings and your paintings will look better. Um, so it's kind of, I have a lot of people say, oh, you're a professional painter, that must be so exciting. It's actually a lot of tedium a lot of tedious tasks, a lot of repetitive mark making, a lot of like, uh, exciting is not the word I would use for it. Although sometimes it can be exciting. It's a little bit more like doing the dishes, sweeping a floor, mopping. Um, um, what other repetitive things do you do? Brushing your teeth, like it's almost a meditation. And if you can embrace that, then you will find yourself resisting this process less.
And when you think you've got it, And actually, I'm even going to draw a line across. You can kind of see. Notice I'm kind of tediously checking everything to come out of my right. notice I've tweaked my drawing quite a lot. If you can look really closely, <laughs> I love this. You can see I've added a second line here because it needed to come out a millimeter and maybe a millimeter two here, not too much, not this far but to here, and I did that because I kind of, I check this width compared to this one. I can see that this width is pretty far up the vertical line. So I'm constantly kind of checking and adjusting as I go. These millimeters ultimately, actually I like that view better because I think it's easier to see. <clears throat> so when you get to this place, Send it over and I'll check it. And if you, and don't worry, uh, there's no, and also for new people here, there's absolutely no chain in doing this and doing it wrong. It is, that is okay. Um, the reason I'm gonna check it is to help you see it. All right, let's see. Again. I think you're, I'm just checking. I think you're a little too wide, Anna, here, across here. If you check, so check this, I'll show you on the source. This should go to here. So this, mm -hmm here and then this distance should be here you're a little bit more like here that will make a difference so bring this in okay i know it sounds boy it's so tedious <laughs> so tedious Jeez. but like the tedious is really amazing Honestly, as humans, I think we are not really meant to sit around. We're meant to be doing repetitive tasks over and over. That's how we kind of learn how to do everything. I'm going to chime into this exercise, but I'm going to do the eyes of Julia. Okay. You're going to take a picture? I uh, I have a gazillion pictures. Okay, so just send, can you send if you want me to look at anything. Send nah, it. nah, I'll I'll send it to you. Okay. You know the drill. Yeah. You're gonna do it in acrylic, Diana. Yeah. Okay, I was tempted to do one of my own cuts as well. Yeah, let's do that. Do it. Do it. Do it. I thought you would like this, Sandra. Yes, I did actually. Right, because very much like it. We spend a lot of time kind of trying to guess where things go, and you can see it. You can absolutely see when the drawing is off. And I think because we have this uh, left brain idea in our mind, we're we're not doing the translation appropriately. We're not really doing the measuring right and looking at the shapes. When we guess, we're we're wrong. Right. Let's see. I thought this is really great. Let's see. All right, Annika, can you do me a favor and turn it around so I can see it the correct the right side up? On the computer, I can't really fix it. 
Oh. Let me rotating. keep rotating. I should rotate it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm checking it right now, but wait a minute. I get all these why, do you have your, why do you have your? Why do you have this line across below the halfway? Okay, so a couple of things. No, no, I just I I did that from the picture. I I'm, I've erased it now. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, because you got confused about where the halfway point is because I have a lot of lines here. Yeah. This is the halfway point. Yeah. I don't have a good eraser, so I can't really erase my old. So here's my halfway point. Yeah, I have a halfway point. Gotcha. Okay, now let me check it. Okay, let's see. As so I took those lines out, they were from the drawing of the on the cat, and I didn't. Now the drawing, well, the drawing on the cat is halfway. Yeah. So they weren't from the drawing on the cat, but you thought they were from the drawing on the cat. It's interesting, isn't it? We think that's what's happening and it really isn't. Um, it's a good thing to keep in mind. Okay. I feel like, can you recheck your halfway point, Monica? Okay. The way I'm looking at it, up, uh, upside or right side or on the side, it doesn't quite but maybe I'm here, hold on, I'm gonna recheck it now that I've got it bigger. Doesn't exactly look, oh yeah, it's, this is not halfway. It's Wait, maybe that's where, oh, okay. You got this right. Um, check I want you to recheck your halfway point. Okay, yeah, it's a little high. A little bit off. And I think uh, I think you're, it's kind of in between these two points that you have. And then the, the last thing I'm going to check. Hold on, I'm going to check your height. Uh, width looks really good. Width looks. Yeah, the good. halfway point was too high. Yeah, halfway point is too high. Everything else looks great. Now it's right. Okay. So I'll wait to see the rest of yours. Leah. What? Are you gonna you're only gonna do the eyes and the nose? You don't do the mouth, for instance. Or... I mean, I'll add the mouth in. Yeah, we'll add the mouth in. But the real oh, okay. lesson is in the eyes and the nose. Once we get the eyes and the nose right, we can add the mouth in. But in. you're gonna do so you're gonna do the face, the whole face that you see, except the ears. Yes, absolutely. I just I just want to know how to crop my cat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just the way it's seen. I think we should do it just the way it's like a nice little um, focus. But here, we'll do it like this. I'll draw the lines. Good question, Sandra. I took one of Trabon yesterday. He's got the best eyes. Yeah. Because it's all kind of the same, right? OK. Let's see. Yeah, it's a similar shape. Hey, uh, I'm just waiting on Anik and Tilla and her dog. Maybe I should. Like that, that will be. Uh, cool. um, Are you sending it across so I can check it? Tilla? You, you mean the drawing, right? Yeah. The, the just the grid. All I want to see is the triangle. Okay. I haven't stopped. I'm not asking to go any further. All right, Anik, let's see. Hey, Anik, can you also turn that around? Is it possible for you to turn it around? Sending you beast. I'm going to do it. I'll try. I mean, you should be able to rotate it in WhatsApp so it comes up the right way. The reason is that I'm, go I'm accessing this from my computer. And I'm just yeah. Looks pretty good to me, Anik. Um, and sorry, another question, Leah. You're doing this on a landscape piece of paper? I don't think it matters. Okay. Bring it landscape, but it does not matter. Okay. I think it might do better as a portrait. Tell me, Leah. Uh, that's yes. good, Anik. All right. So, Tilla, we're waiting to see your guys' uh, grids. Okay, we're struggling to find the WhatsApp group still, actually. Sorry. Um, um, give me a second and I'll send you an invite via email. Okay. So here's... I, I can't do it from there, honey. No, that, that doesn't work, yeah. 
but I will take a look. Let me just send it over to you and I will. Okay, thank you. Yep, give me a second. I sent you what I'm gonna do. Okay, give me just a second. Mm -hmm. I guess I should send to just what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. I can't do it. Sorry guys, I'm gonna have to pull this off for a second. I can't. The WhatsApp on uh, my computer doesn't like to do is it the WhatsApp on my phone will do? Let's see. Oh, oh Sandra. I took a photo yesterday. <laughs> She's very sweet. Oh, that's that beautiful. Is eye. beautiful. Oh, my God. Actually, can I send the link via uh, the chat on WhatsApp or should I send it via an email? I asked to took a photo of my. Um, yeah, um, one second, guys. I'm just trying to figure this I out. I wonder, um, maybe if I send you my phone number, would you be able to just add me? I don't. Uh, I'm not great at that, actually. So let me. I mean, I thought I added you, actually. Okay. Hold on. Um, unfortunately, that's the one thing I can't do on WhatsApp. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So let me, I'm going to email it. I, I emailed it to you once before, but I'm going to email it to you again. And yeah, I, the, the link wouldn't open. It was just kind of um, um, spinning, but uh, I can, I'll try again. No, no, no. And this is all just the beginning. Uh, here, hold on. I'm grabbing the thread. And I know I have you in my... So, okay, so then, let's do this, because I know I've got you here. Oh, okay, yeah, now it actually works, the, but that was for the pastels. Uh, I did get an invite that... Um, yes, I'll send you for this one. I'm sending it okay. over. Yeah, perfect, thank you. We got you. You're in. I mean, you're not in, but you. there's a link. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, <laughs> believe me, it's kind of ridiculous until you get the setup. And then, as you've learned, Tilla, it's, it takes like three classes to get the setup. <laughs> exactly, yeah. All right, so you have it now. I'm going to look at Sandra's. And because I heard cute little noises. Oh, yeah, it's super cute. Is it super cute? Well, she does have the super cutest cats. Yeah. Well, I have a cute cat too. Oh. Uh, Maurice is here and he's getting offended all the time. So yes, Maria, you're the cutest cat. Oh, Julia, what a sweetie. Anna, that looks much better. Um, much better. Let's see. One, two. Yeah, perfect. You got it. Got it. You may widen out just a tick here. So you might kind of like just like a, a millimeter on each side at the halfway point, but it looks good to me. It looks great. But good job, you guys. This is the only tedious thing. Then it can, then it becomes very easy. And wait, Sandra, why did I not? Oh, buddy. Buddy boo. Mateo, interesting. Good job, Mateo. Excellent. Yep, I mean, with the help of Mama, but um, yeah, Mama, it, it's so perfect. tedious that he's already done. We will finish later his. Tila, we don't mind. There's always kids. <laughs> There's like kids and children always around. All right, um, I'm gonna sketch you, I'm gonna sort of skip you forward to the people. And then um, just whenever you get it in, I'll take a look. And I'm always okay. I'm finally there, actually. So. Hey, hey, welcome. Well, uh, do that. Cats and mouths has a lot in common, huh? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, let's give Okay. Oh, oh, got you. Wonderful. Is this okay. one? Is this I wonder. One that's okay. mine. It looks more 
sort of uh, disheveled in, <laughs> in the photo. Well, we I tell you, I'm going to tell you what's off. There's a little, it's a little bit off. I'm going to tell it you. It is more off. Okay. Uh, just, just a second. Okay. So the width is good. You got the width right. Um, you will notice that your line is not at the halfway point. It's below. So your halfway point is, is he, well, your halfway point is at the dot above. Yeah. And really your halfway, the line has to go at the halfway point. The line, the, the reason you're confused uh, is that I can't erase this because I don't have any good erasers on me right now. Oh, uh, okay. So the line's supposed to be on the halfway, half, at the halfway, halfway point. At the halfway point. Other than that, it looks uh, pretty good. Oh, uh, okay. Yep, looks pretty good to me. Okay. All right. So we're ready to go. We're ready to go forward. Yay. All right. So when we start to sketch out this eye, we're not going to do the outer shape. Um, I'm going to do the outer shape. Yeah. Yeah, I speak Swedish. Yeah, I also speak Swedish. Yeah, I saw this too. Et land Swedish. Also, say I guess Swedish rad. Et land. Yeah. Born in Norway, Sverige, America. Born in Los Angeles. I, I yeah, We're both in the LA area, and uh, Diana is the head of the press club here, and I'm just a journalist. Yeah. I just saw your yeah, name. Really, you are very Norsk. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just a journalist. Yeah. So notice, I'm looking at this outside edge here. Notice that the that the nose doesn't come exactly at the halfway point. It's a little bit to the left. The halfway point's a little bit to the left. So as you start to sketch in your eye shape, A, look at how much space it takes up. More space than we think it should. We kind of start with this. It looks a little bit off. We can still adjust this. I'm like, oh, got to bring that up a little bit. Also got to bring it in. You know, I'm kind of sketching it and then sort of adjusting it. And by the way, you know, my voice had a different color, so you can really see it. Here's my halfway points and my quarter points. So the quarter point is just the halfway point divided in half and orange. <clears throat> If you can see that, you can see kind of, if you can find the halfway point. You can see where the nose, the top of the, or the top of that little pink part of the nose starts. We can see the kind of dark sides of the nose. This is where the nose turns away from the face. Okay. Yep. <laughs> it looks like an alien right now. Then again, cats have very, and if you want to do things, you can check stuff like you can draw can like check things like, I don't know. You can check like the distance from here to here compared to your vertical line. 
I know that the distance from here to here is the same as this halfway point of the vertical. You can see that here. So as I check against my halfway point in my vertical, right, I'm constantly sort of able, really you're using the vertical line and it's halfway points and it's quarter points. I've got to put this here somewhere. Um, I'm trying to erase this so it doesn't confuse you guys so much. There we go. So this is halfway and quarter points. You can, here's halfway and quarter points. You can kind of see like where different parts of the eye line up. In fact, I'm going to. Once again, take this across. And notice we're doing the outer shape. So basically, we are delaying oh, gratification yeah, yeah. of the eye. We are delaying the gratification that, that people want, which is to have, to get right to those eyes and start drawing the inside eyes and the details. This is gonna be the last thing we do. Right, we start by getting, you start with bigger shapes and you move to this and the shapes in relation to each other and you move to the smaller ones. And that is really, here we go. And I've sent it across. So those orange marks are really the quarter points and the halfway points on the vertical line. There we go. Right. And then once I've got that, then I can sketch in iris, the, the iris, the pupil. Notice the people on this one isn't exactly centered, a little bit to the left. Notice the little bits of white, or in this case, kind of dark around the edge of the iris. These shapes are gonna be important. And notice how I'm always going yeah, in fact, this cat is looking a little bit to our left. I don't know if you can see that, but his eye is turned. So the pupils are both just a little bit to the left. They're not exactly centered, which is interesting. It's almost impossible to get exactly straight on. Uh, cat, yeah, they move a lot, round a lot, don't they? <laughs> Cuts and humans, I guess. Yeah, all of us, right? All of us. They, um, uh, I had my computer set up before I before I got here. I was wondering who would come early. I was running around and I had my computer set up next to Bazoo. And uh, Annika was talking to Bazoo. She came on first and saw him. And they were, and uh, he probably didn't stay still at all, did he, Annika? Well, he, he did really look at towards me. Oh yeah, he's very responsive to humans, which is weird since he's definitely a feral cat. Yes, he remembers it previously. I don't think he was ever a, I really don't think he belonged to anybody, Sandra. I meant to reincarnation. Oh, maybe, maybe. Oh, maybe. Oh, I love, I love that you brought that up. <laughs> you can see this on his little nose. His little nose is also kind of turned a little bit. We see more on this side than on this side. So even though it looks like he's looking straight at us, he isn't quite. And then there's kind of a, I'm going to just sketch this out so I remember when we start painting it. There's a kind of darker part of the iris in here, and then it's kind of lighter around the outside. Near the iris, near the pupil, it's darker.
there's always like these kind of one of the things about cat eyes that I think makes them so remarkable is that almost always there's this dark lines around a fur lines markings and then around the edge of the dark lines there's almost always a light area you can see it here and here now we're busting out of the triangle it looks like owl eyes yeah yes a... particularly i when i was a kid we had this uh, blue persian and they have huge orange eyes it totally looks like an owl all right there's his little mouth which really is just at the bottom of that triangle you start to go, ah, I know I spent a lot of time on that triangle, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad I did. Uh, and then I can. Oh, shit. All right, Diana. If you see. No, it, no, I asked. I asked uh, miscalculated a little bit. So what I can see is to the very top of this crop is one half of the vertical distance. I don't know if you can see it. I'm measuring it now. Um, if I come up here, very fortunately, almost a little bit less than half the crop. So I know that I can kind of start my ear, the things that are at the top here. that this line kind of stops about here and then it bends in whoops down a little bit ah oh, there we go now we're starting to get a little bit of kitty and i'm going to do a couple of things i'm going to continue to use my vertical lines to help me see how far apart i can see that it's a little bit less than a halfway my vertical oh i'm off I need to bring this out further. I'm glad you're off too. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Good. Good. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I am so used to mistakes. It's so common for me. So much a part of the process. You don't really even, and you are too, Dan Diane. I know you know yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit, wait, let's see. It's a little bit less. If I come here and I go this way, yep, it's about here. So you see, now I figured out where my edge is. I'm not going to be able to fit quite as much of my ear as I'd like, but I'll be able to get some of it. And now, to about here, the face kind of bends down. <laughs> It's a funny crop, actually, but it's good. I can see that my bottom crop is about oh, a little bit, maybe about the size of the nose. So I'm actually going to draw a line straight across in my painting there. I'm not going to try and guess where I think the kitty might go. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing on this side. On this side, it's like a quarter. Now, this is how you can really tell the cat's face is turned because there's less distance between here and here than it was. That means we don't have exactly his. I think his head is turned a little bit this way to the right, and it's look. He's looking to the left. I may have to bring this in in a few places. I'm tweaking it a little bit. There's the basic shapes. 
Oh yeah, I think be, this one will be kind of a fun one to paint. And I don't know if anybody else is finding this interesting. That's like his paw going out here, and then this is his back. Um, down a little bit. I don't know. You can check here and see how far. Yep. If you want to, you can get a couple of stripes in too. You'll start to see that it becomes easier once you have these main shapes in, because now you can kind of use what you've got. You can use these, this and these shapes to kind of judge where everything else should be. Also, our paint will very nicely go over all of this. Let's see, there's kind of a little... <coughs> There we go. That's what's going on. There's kind of like a back end. All right. I'm sketching out kind of the white shapes. Well, this is actually great. We'll be able to. kind of um, practice our, our mark making, right? With the brush, we'll be able to do brush, good fun brush stuff. I'm not doing every stripe by the way, just kind of general transitions where things go from light to dark. You come far. I am the teacher. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> to go fast. <laughs> and uh, let me send over this for you, actually. Since as Diana's pointing out, I can, I forget sometimes and go really fast. I get excited. Anyway, go ahead. So let me send these over. Unfortunately, that is just a problem. I have never really managed to resolve it <laughs> super well. I try to slow down and I can't. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Well, it's hard for people to follow though, you know, like it's, it's not like. I think it's fine. Did you see uh, what Jonathan did in watercolor last night? Yeah, I did look. I'm sorry. I mean, I what well, it was Tuesday, right? I'm sorry I missed, but I have so much work right now. It's just like crazy. It's pretty amazing. He totally changed. He's good. He's good. Yeah, it's his medium naturally, I think. Yeah. yeah. But he is a graphic artist, so I mean, it should come natural to him. Yes. Once you got the, I think the, using the brush is probably a different. Yeah. Thing, but it, he does. It does seem to come naturally to him. That is true. Yeah, I know. I thought I was like, you totally added stuff to this. But you know, he he also uh, he teaches design. So that's right. Should be it's this should all make sense. Just to yeah. show you guys in watercolor last night, we did this really fun exercise. It was quite quick. This was my demo. He's and, a he's natural though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he is a natural for sure. And uh, the demo of one of the students, he added flowers to it. He kind of darkened the table. It looks amazing. He just, you could see he wasn't like happy with the finished result. He was like, this isn't done. So he added stuff to it. It was really fun. For those of you that less, that like, for, for people here, watercolor painting is not really accessible as a live class um, because it's at, I don't know, four in the morning, your time. It's really designed to be a, a West Coast US after work class. Time but you record them. 
Yeah, but that's exactly what I was going to say. But there are recordings. So I will send across the thread again the YouTube channel where you can find a recording of virtually every class. So if you feel like you want to try something, it's free to go on. It, there are hundreds of videos. It's the the I mean it's it's a class channel that is like to I mean this this class will go up on the will go up on the um red will go up on the YouTube channel uh, within a day or so. <laughs> Um, so it's great if you want to try some watercolor exercises. Um, it's a really fun class and a great way. In fact, if you want to try any of the classes, uh, you should all have the schedule. If you don't, I'll put. I'll send off just a reminder. I'm going to send this. Here's my website, which has a description of every class. It has the schedule for when the classes are. Essentially, all of the classes except the tween classes, which you need to pay for, um, are free to you guys. So you can go any, you can go onto the website anytime and see uh, and see the where the schedule is, what we've got going on. And then if you can't find that here. Um, channel here's the youtube channel and it's got time we've got abstract art we've got caricature drawing we've got procreate there's a whole bunch of procreate classes we did last year pretty much everything that my studio has taught you in the last three years is available two and a half years is available I'm going to send it over to you. There we go. So that is coming across the chat right now as well. And I'll send it across the thread too, but here it is. I also have a So when you think you're, if you're thinking, you're, if you're struggling or if you're doing well, or you want me to just look at it, now is the time to send it off. Oh, let's see. All right. I don't know. She's oh, looking I... pretty good. That's Thank you. Good. Um, I will say that I'm more at the Twitter point. Those um is a, the pink part of the nose is a little higher up mm -hmm. never mind you've got it you've got it <laughs> thank you i'm trying with the left eyes still because uh it, it feels like it's a little bit um too round yeah just keep, yeah 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 it's a slightly mm -hmm. that'll just be little nips in and there mm -hmm. right. fabulous. thank you yeah okay i have a rough sketch <laughs> Give me a second. Let me take a look at Anna's and then I will check out yours. Oh, I haven't sent it yet. I'm sending it now. Okay, let's see. Anna, you're doing a good job of paying attention. I think your visual spatial awareness is good. I think you need to bring, I don't know. No, it's really, go ahead. Um, this looks great, hon. Here, hold on. I'm just double checking everything. I'm checking, yep. Good job on the right and left side of the face here and here, very nice. Very good, it looks very good. My uh, cat has much rounder eyes than that cat. Are you just guessing what's happening down here at the base? At me? Yeah. You mean as opposed to measuring with my pencil? Yeah, well, no, you've come down below Oh yeah, it's because I just started it too high up. <laughs> so right. that just might be what I, what I would recommend doing just for the sake of the exercise, I just drew a line down here where my painting stops. Okay. 
All right. So I would do the same thing because I don't know if you're going to be able to guess it right. Yeah. Well, sure. um, and then you're going to confuse yourself with this and that. You know what I mean? Like those and the other things. So just draw a line straight across on your canvas. Okay. Even do this. You can, we'll draw a little, we'll paint a little border in. Otherwise, looks pretty good. All right. Oh, Diana, very nice. <laughs> she looks it like, almost looks like a bug. Yeah, it does. It does oh. look like a bug. I guess it's the type of color. So. Oh, it's fabulous. Really fabulous. I, I think I'm going to try to keep it a little bit impressionistic. I like that idea. It's a good You're going to use the palette knife? I am not using the palette knife. This is just a pretty small painting. Sorry. I think it's like 10. Yeah, by great job. Is this you? Great job with the measurements. Great job with your measurements. Um, so the only correction I'm going to give. OK, so there's just two minor corrections. But in the but in the case of your kitty and your kitty, kitty eye, very good eye. Very good at using your measurements here. Excellent work. Really, really excellent work. Um, and great use of your measurements. Put things in the right places. Was that helpful? Sorry, was that mine? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very helpful. You know, the outer edges is the is the thing that I struggled with the most because then I didn't have the, the triangle anymore to... Yeah, so that, that that's what I want to talk to you about. So there's two things. Because uh, it looks like an alien now and not... Uh, it started out looking like a cat and then it started looking like some kind of freaky alien. Yeah. Well, because it moves up, because I think a little bit you need to, you have a little bit too much. The, the, okay, so a couple of things. The iris comes right up to the edge here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Yes. So that's number one. Same thing happening over here. Same thing happening. Yeah. Over here. To really adjust that. So think of this as these shapes and you really look at these three shapes in relation to each other. The second thing is that your, your face on this side is a little bit too far in. So here's what I did. I used my vertical distance. This is the halfway point. And I checked it against the edge of the eye. The mm -hmm. edge of the eye. You can see it's a little bit less, right? So yeah. I can over here. So that's the whole point of establishing this, is that you use it to measure your proportions for everything else. Yeah. So you bring it a little bit farther out here. And then if you come over here, you'll see that it's only a quarter of the way from the edge of the triangle. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? See that? This is one quarter point. If I come here, that's where the edge is. One quarter point edge from the edge of the triangle. So on this side, it's one quarter of the vertical. Okay. On this side, it's one half of the vertical. Why do you mm -hmm. suppose it is? That's because we're not looking at this cat straight on. He's got his head slightly turned. Do what? Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. So they, you yeah, but... control, which is the normal thing to do in a left brain way, but that's not actually what's happening. On this side, the edge is one quarter of the vertical distance. On this side, the edge is. Mm -hmm. The other thing, Kayla, is that you have the mouth down here. Okay, right. It's close to the nose. Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. So, so what happened was you, like everybody else, I think, got confused when you got to this point. We don't have, you don't have the bottom part of the cat. So what I'm going to suggest you do is come down one more quarter point from the, from the, uh, from the quarter point. We're going to draw a line straight across. We're going to paint this a solid color, and this is the end of the painting. We extended him too long, basically. But that's okay. It's like, you know, you're trying to guess. 
here's what's interesting. If you guess and you don't have, um, how do I say this? If you guess and you're not using the measurements, then you start to have problems. You start to kind of, you don't have the rest oh, of the company. What are you doing? Hmm. No, but in general, Tilla, excellent. I mean, all of these, are, this is an excellent first drawing. And it's so, my first time. <laughs> I think you did excellent. I think you did great. Um, it's just little teeny things, right? And also, just to be aware, I will sometimes, in for expediency, focus right in on the thing that's wrong without going, hey, you got all the, you got, you know, nine out of 10 things right. Great job. So you can totally call me on that. If I haven't done that, <laughs> now I will go back and say, oh, no, you're right. This is like nine, nine, nine out of 10 times. This is fabulous. It's just little things. Yeah. Uh, well, what you need to hear is how, what to correct. So what's good yeah. is hey there. So that's, that makes sense. I think we also need to hear what we've done well, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a little encouraging. Sure. In theory, in theory, yes. Um, there we go. So go ahead and send it across when you're ready. Um, for those of you, I think, Anna, you're mostly ready to go. So what I thought is, does anybody have thought? I don't just wondering, I think maybe a, or a burnt sienna underpainting or a red underpainting might be a good way to go on this kitty because we've got a lot of black and white and it's kind of warm underneath, kind of orangey. So my suggestion, but you totally can pick whatever color you want. So I'll get you our paints. We're just going to start with burnt sienna. I'm going to take The color I use a lot, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Uh, and a ultramarine blue. Hmm. Only those two colors, and we're going to use those two colors for the painting. Then My water's a little murky. Oh, a little tasty, tasty. There we go. And I've got kind of a murky, murky water. There we go. Nice and I've got kind of murky. So I'm going to use an actually pretty big brush. This an inch. And the water is. I'm going to start by I'm going to start by talking my paper. What does that mean? I'm going to kind of glaze it. I'm going to get a slight watery layer on my brush so that it, when I paint it, I can see the drawing to it. This, but I think it'll be really suitable for this. Can you see? It's almost like I'm using like a filter on my thumb. This is called glazing. We're going to do it quite a lot. In this beginning layer, I don't think I've ever done this with you before, but I think this is a really good place to start. It's just kind of a warm layer. It's okay if we go darker because we're going to be able to layer lights on top. With acrylic, it's important, but I do want to kind of keep my lights. So I'm actually taking a paper towel and then going around and kind of pulling out my lighter areas with a paper towel. Even in some cases, Trying to communicate some of the swooshing fur marks. I 
I'm really going to just the lightest. And then press with a different brush because I want to keep this. I'm going to take my blue. Blue, so that I don't try to paint, you know, into it, and it helps define the bottom border of my paper for my paint. Cut it off, cover it up. I can do it later. Um, You want a big paper towel. You want a big paper or an orangey red color, whatever orangey red color you've got. You're going to start with a watery glaze across the whole thing, and you can see. And then, while that's still wet, you want to take your paper towel and pull the paper. So what we maybe don't anticipate when we look at a queen. Yeah, I don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. Diana and Annika, it must be nice for you to hear Swedish. Well, it's, it's Norwegian. Norwegian. It's Norwegian. Oh, it's Norwegian. Oh, forgive me. <laughs> what a stupid American mistake to make. How cool is it like the difference between Spanish and English? No, it's it's very similar. Like Spanish and Portuguese. It's very similar. Yeah, Spanish and Portuguese, I think. That's cool. no, the Norwegians always sound incredibly happy. They sound like, oh, I'm gonna kill really? you. <laughs> <laughs> you you're an asshole. You know, it's like we yeah. sound more dramatic. Ingmar Bergman, we're all gonna kill ourselves. I have to say that what? I really observe about Swedish cinema, books like music, it is, does not hesitate to go to dark places. No. The best no, we do not we hesitate to go to dark places. <laughs> what, uh, what, does, what, do, what does Danish sound like then? Yeah. Eat porridge, they have porridge in their mouth. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. They have oh, in their right. too. All right, so, yeah. um, sweet sound like. One uh, one of my best friends, actually, uh, I have to. Uh, <laughs> she studied Danish and uh, lived for a while there. And honestly, when she speaks Danish, she sounds like she has a hot potato in her throat. So yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I was told when I began learning German in France. My German teacher was French. Said, "Oh no," he said. He said the that of the English, but English it was like compared to German, where you pronounce every letter. But English was like if you had a potato in your mouth. But I like Danish. I like the glottal stop. I like the sound of it. It's it's, watch, uh, yeah. don't, don't turn off your. We want to hear you speak it. Now we need to hear more. Oh, so you like Danish? Danish? No, no. You can speak some more Norwegian. <laughs> <laughs> what does Swedish sound like? I cannot snack in Norsk. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's that's okay. I guess. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the Swedes think that they can speak Norwegian, but um, yeah, it sounds it sounds kind of Norwegian, yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, but uh, I've never thought of Danish as a beautiful language. Somebody said that. Um, I know some English people that I know they they listen to their flatmates speak call home and speak in Danish, and they were just like rolling on the floor with laughter because it sounded so funny. Oh, um, really? 
Danish is a little odd, right? Like if, in when it's written, when it's written down, it's almost the same as my language. It's like uh, uh, we yeah, uh, like slightly an archaic form of our because uh, we used to we used to essentially write Danish and then we didn't evolve a little bit or change from that. But when I hear it, I can. It's really hard to understand because of the way they pronounce the um, their their consonants, I guess, and vowels yeah. and everything. Anything basically. They've got a really good pronunciation. It's really hard to understand them. But in Norwegian, that uh, Ny Norsk is much more difficult for us to understand. I mean, we can understand, I think there's some Norwegian that's very difficult to understand for Swedish people too. Yeah, it's yeah, dialects basically. I think some of our dialects yeah. would be. Like people from Bad Again? Yeah, we've got really, a really lively selection of dialects. So yes. um, some of those would be hard to understand, sure. But I have to ask, I, I, I've never painted, painted with acrylics before and I'm, I'm not quite sure <laughs> what happened. Um, is that like a base layer somehow? I was about to talk about that. This is a base yeah. layer. So yeah, let's, let me talk about that for a minute. So what we are doing is creating an underpainting. Ah, oh, okay. We are not and going the to top layers. And very often the underpainting is a different, it's a different set of colors than the top layer. Um, okay. And this particular base painting, we did, I did as a glaze. So I started as a glaze. So I have three pieces of equipment in here. I'll just rub it off and do it again. Oh, no. Okay, don't worry. Your drawing is disappearing. <laughs> It's not, it's not. It's yes, yeah. It's really not disappearing. All right. So this is I am working with a very working with two colors. I'm all blue and I'm working with a burnt orange called burnt sienna. You might have that, you might have something you might have cadmium red, you might have a. you might a, it's really an orange that we're wanting. This is kind of an orangey brown. And then, and you can choose kind of whatever colors. So, if you want to stop and take a look at what colors you have. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have. I have actually one called burnt sienna. Great. So, you want to put a little bit of it on your palette. You want to have a. a this is a dish of water. Okay. Acrylics are made. We use acrylics with water. If you're working with just like watercolor. Right, so mm -hmm. you have a picture of water, your brush is wet with water. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to pull just a little bit of paint so that mm -hmm. it, you can see it's different than if I do this. If I do this, can you see how I've got like paint on my brush? It's kind of, yeah. Weird. I don't want to do that. I don't want any kind of big paint blotches on my brush. I want this kind of watery, runny layer of burnt sienna. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a big brush and cover the layer. This is called glazing. See how I can bring a little bit more paint into it as I go along? And it should be able to work a little bit the way in this particular case. It'll work a little bit the way uh, like your finger on your thumb, right? Yeah. And when I cover the whole thing, I can still see my drawing underneath. But I'm getting some color on this canvas because if I lay my top colors right on this white canvas, they will look flat. So I need to build up my painting in layers. And then I'm going to take this piece of paper towel. Okay, I'll go And then watch this. This needs to happen before it dries. I'm going to go in and look at where the whitest area is. Uh huh. I'm going to pull them out. Pull the water out. Mm hmm. Yes. A lot of. That's it. OK. 
Okay. That's what, so that's the first job. And then I'll show you how we start to layer darkers in on top of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, this is just like where we stopped our painting. So I took a blue here. I don't know if you've got that. I just took some of this and painted over my border so I would know where my painting starts and my border begins. Sorry, say that again? The blue line? This, it's this line. Uh, so and that's not that you show. Stops and my, I still have canvas. I need to do something with it. So I just put a border. Okay. Let's see. Everything about the painting process, Tilla, is very, um, let's see, this is looking so good, is very um, non-intuitive. Let's see. Yeah, it's quite, you know, systematic, structured, I guess, if that's it's, what you mean. It's about, yeah, it's, it's a whole new process. And mm. it doesn't make sense if you've never done it before. It feels mm. unintuitive. But the reason that we do this is that paint looks better layered and more with more depth to it if we have several layers. Yeah. That's interesting. So, and because we can't see it, we think it's not there. But if you see it, I'll, I'll send over a couple of paintings I'm working on to show you how this works, this kind of idea mm -hmm. of the, and then the overpainting. So this is an underpainting. I, I'm not finished with it, but it's the beginning of an underpainting. Right. And the colors we pick will often inform our layers on the top. There's little tiny bits of orange in this cat. So remember, we're going to be going to black and white. I wanted to. Um, just wanted to um, uh, uh, start with a layer that's kind of warmish. So other things in. Okay, Annika, I'm going to talk to you about this drawing. Um, I'm, just, I'm not. I'm going to go back to my goats now. I'm not going to okay. do it. But I do want to talk to you about the drawing. There's a one or two things that are a little bit off. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. so, although I love it. Your mark making is fabulous. I want to say first off, art absolutely. Um, so really, I feel that your translation from brush to pencil in black. I can feel your brushwork. Uh, your brushwork. I love this thing going on over here. I love these swoops. I love these interpretations of like. I love how you're interpreting the um, uh, the fur and the marks. It's wonderful. It's like really wonderful. So the only issues we have here as usual are drawing issues, right? So let me check here. So this one, I'm just looking for your halfway quarter point. I just have to do the measurement before I can tell you. Well, It feels like this eye needs to be a bit bigger. Okay. Yeah. And also, I was going to say, it looked like you were a little bit off, but actually, let's see. Actually, never mind. Your measurements are good. But this but this eye needs to be bigger. Can you okay. see, like, the like the relationship between here let's see let me see if i can show you how to there should be one eye space between each eye might be yeah a little bit wider and longer you know what? it's it's really good though it's really good and maybe nip him in a little bit on this side. You know what? I, I really can't find much fault with this. I think it's pretty dang good. 
I, but I, I did get a bit carried away drawing, but I just enjoyed it so much. I thought, oh, okay, I don't know. So wide in this, notice this space is like a little bit wider than you've got it. Yeah. Yep. So if, since you're in the drawing, take a little time to widen this a little bit. Bring this. Okay. Um, bring your whites in and you can bring this down, which will make your whites smaller, right? Which they kind of need to be too. Yeah. Like, right, that's really the white. But like, for the most part, it's really, really good. Yeah, really, it's the eye needs to come down almost to here, right? If you see, if you run a, the eye comes almost to the halfway point. Yeah. It's a little bit above it, uh, higher here, slightly higher here. So the eye, so just make those corrections, make this a little bit bigger, make yeah. this wider. And then I think you'll see everything else looks great. I love how you did this and this, you got that. It's a really good drawing. And mark making is beautiful. Thank you. Great work. I know the drawing's really fun. Oh, and now you're, <laughs> okay, Anik. Oh God, they're so cute. Oh yeah, that's right. Cause last week I got kicked off. Yeah, that's why I need to go back to the cat or the, the goats. Goaties. Oh my God, Anik, these are so cute. They're so fun to paint, honestly. Oh my God. So let me ask you, what do you think the first thing you need to do is? I need to make eyes. I mean, I need to finish eyes because they are now just a blobs of, of, of yellow because it was too, too wet uh, last time when I was putting the yellow on the black. Let's take so, a, let's take a one step even further back. What's one thing you can do since it's all dry right now before you get started? You want me to glaze it? <laughs> the reason I want you to glaze it is to push your shadows. It's I actually... Know similar to what we're doing here. Mm. So I'd like you to try just a light blue, maybe a cobalt blue. Cobalt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, glaze. And then wipe off, just like I'm doing here right now, you can wipe, wipe off all the white areas. Then go in and do mm -hmm. your eyes. You can I mean, you can do a different color blue if you want, but I think cobalt will be a nice and neutral. I guess so. Oh, I think, like, I, I have also cerulean, but I think the cobalt will be better. If you want to do, try it. But I want you to take a blue, place the whole thing back, and then with a paper tail, pull out your light. Oh, thank me for that. Right now, I'm looking at things like your shadows. I, it could just totally finish. Everything mm -hmm. besides like the little tiny details of the eyes, bits of white. There's a, a kind of losing of control when you glaze. Mm -hmm. I know you're worried about like, but remember it's a transparent layer. You can pull off whatever you want. I'm going to glaze. You'll thank me. You'll thank me later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always do. I had a student once who had real control right? and a wonderful student who wanted to just be clear. She was very, she was a beautiful knitter, sewer, uh, uh, very particular about er very beautiful aesthetics. So it really bothered her when things didn't look right. And I remember the first time I told her to glaze, she shot me this look like she wanted to kill me. <laughs> I really she was and like it wasn't me. Well, it wasn't me. <laughs> I actually done he's got all the sports. This is a, a, a quiet. And then she did it and she was like, oh my God. And I mm. but I her, I wanna I want to honor the side of you that doesn't like to let go of control because or lose, right? Because that is like your aesthetic. It's part of your aesthetic. We should not diss it, but understand that sometimes we have to let go of control. Look at how my team is bleeding in. Mm. I rubbed it out and put it in a couple of times. 
No, I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I, for instance, um, I'm torn about glazing often because uh, at some point, like in the middle of painting, I'm just arriving at it. Yes, finally, I got this shape. I got this. I got that. So I have this element, and then you glaze it, yeah? and it's basically all over again. But on the other hand, when I I remember this exercise that we were doing the, with the with the turtle painting the turtle. Oh God! It was all if it wasn't for uh, at least I think there was two layers of glaze, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be looking. It wouldn't seem like like it's floating in a, in a, you know like in the water. Yeah. So it was basically uh, glazing was the, the the thing to do. Same goes with my my. The, those paintings of my parents' garden. The, oh, there's also glaze, not one oh, layer. All glazing all the time. Yeah, and it's and it made everything well, basically. Basically, you realize that glazing will do the heavy lifting for you. You can't exactly anticipate it because you're not like making every stroke yourself. But then you realize you don't have to. Glazing does the work. You just don't exactly know what the glazing is going to be. Speaking of, uh, Tilla, how is it going over there with your glazing? Anna, how about you? I can show you how to move to the next step. Yeah, yeah I think uh, I can place now. <laughs> yeah, let's, 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 um, you can just hold it up if you want to. I can see it. You guys can hold it up. This kind of stage, I can put it here. Fabulous. Perfect. Yep, yep, very nice. Uh, don't forget to let it get your bottom, lay it, the bottom. Get rid of that bottom layer. You're going to stop it. I'm going to show you exactly where you're going to stop it. You're going to stop this painting at this same point. So it's one quarter down. You're going to draw a line straight across. Are you understanding what I'm saying here on this one? Uh, yeah, I, I'm just wondering, so what's going to happen to that in the long run, so to speak? Well, I, is it, I'm going to say, we're not going to paint past it because you don't know yeah. past it. <laughs> so maybe you're going to cut it off. Maybe you're going to keep it there. Okay. So you have to mark it so that you don't get confused. Right. You can um, see how you want to do it, guys. You, trust me on this. <laughs> You're going to need to follow with me to really get this process. <laughs> You'll be very frustrated when you try to paint down here because you're going to be trying to paint this down here and it's not going to work. You need a okay. You need a I'm, going to, I'm going to have to trust you because it feels like it's counter just it's 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 to, to be honest. I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it is you're not gonna have to trust me so for the and then i'm gonna take my darkest parts of the painting i'm taking a smaller brush now and i'm mixing my blue and my orange together to make it kind of muddy dark and i'm gonna go in no, you're doing great, by the way. I appreciate that you're like, I really don't want to do that, and I'm going to do it. Yeah. I, 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 I promise you, everything is fixable. With paint, you can paint over anything. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. Paint, you can paint over anything. So anything you don't like, you can paint over it. So notice I'm kind of going to my darkest edges. Look at what happens when I do that. All of a sudden, my eyes like, now there's some white dots in the eye. Don't worry about that. Just get dark in there right now. We can put the white on later. The beauty of acrylic and oil painting is that as it dries, you can layer lighter area, lighter paint on top. It looks amazing. Yes. So you can put light over anything. This is not true with watercolor and with um, ink, which makes them harder. But this is a very forgivable medium.
kind of going in. It's this bluey orange. It'll look kind of brownish, weird. And I'm really just kind of marking the areas that are darkest. Let's see. Blue and orange, what I'm going to forget what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, 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 I'm uh, did you mix uh, dark blue and orange? Is that what you said? To make a kind of muddy dark. Yeah, okay. You can see I'm kind of moving around. I'm going to the darkest areas first. I'm adding, if I see stripes, like very visible stripes, I'm adding. That kind of matches here. I'm not seeing all the stripes. All the stripes can be very uh, intimidating, but I'm doing the ones I can see. Maybe it it's interesting how even as I start to layer this in, um, to my eye, it still looks very like unfinished, but it still feels it still looks very cat-like. And even as I start to layer in these darks, you'll see that the darks and lights are, they're having a reaction to each other. This is what we call a block-in, right? It means we've got the darks, the lights, the basic darks, mediums, and lights in. So that when we go in with our top colors, they're already kind of spelled out for us. We don't have every dark, but we've got the ones we can see. I'll show you how, um, see if I can do this from here, actually. I can show you how. Well. I'm going to take a picture of this so you guys can see it, and then I'm going to show you kind of how an underpainting can work. Let me send this across first so you can see it. Really weird, but I'm going to work on the eyes now. <laughs> Doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, oh, hold on. Nope, that's not right. There, here's my painting. Wait, actually, I'm painting across. Across the thread, send you the current painting that I'm working on. This is, yes, this is an underpainting for, it's a four foot painting, four by four feet, about two meters, two and a half, two and a half by two meters. This is an underpainting. And then, oops, nope. And then, Hold on. Honestly, this underpainting looks like a painting already. 
Isn't it look neat? I love that's what I love. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Sweet. It's really nice of you to say. Um, here, hold on. I'm looking for my albums. Here's my camera. Um, then I glazed it. I just want to show you, I made myself do the same process too. Here it is glazed in blue. All right. And then here it is. Now I'm starting to layer the top colors on. Here is where I'm starting to layer on the top colors. And you will see that these vibrant greens look really amazing on top of, so I did this painting and then I pushed it back and now I'm layering on top with greens. And here's where I left it right before I came to class this morning. It is here for sure. So I want you to see how the underpainting can affect So if you can see that, you can see how the layers kind of inform each other and how my red layers don't really bother the top. Did I lose everybody? Oh, there they are. So that is kind of an example of how the underpainting works. This one is a little less dramatic. It'll still work. I have a student, give me a second. This one isn't working as I wanted it to work. So, what's the problem? I look at it. Well, give me a second. Uh, I have a student wanting to get to the. I will. I, there's no panic. I mean, I'm working on it, so it's. Is it a is it a drawing problem or a painting problem? It's a painting problem. Okay. But it's okay. I'll get there. It's just not it was fresher when i had it just just uh, sketched out it was much fresher it's it's easy to overwork it yeah that's what i've done so now i have to rethink But that's okay. It was just an exercise. Yes. Some things work out, some things do not. Everything teaches you something. Yeah.
All right. Oh, Anna, very nice. And <laughs> to see it has a kind of elegance to it, even in these base stages. Um, what's the, okay, it looks to me, I don't know, it looks pretty good still, Diana, but maybe um, uh, nose isn't in the right place? I, I think it's in the right place. It's just a little bit too big. It's a little too big. Yeah. So that's actually more of a drawing problem than a painting problem. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you always like to say that thing. It's a good thing to know the difference. It's a distinction, right? Uh, is your problem with the painting or is the problem with the drawing? Most often, the problem is with painting, uh, drawing, less than it is with painting. You might be using paint to draw, right? but it's a good thing to know. Yeah, and then, but I'm not happy with the painting either, so. <laughs> but it will be better. But it's the drawing that you're not happy with. It's not the actual paint. It's not the you're you're drawing with paint. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's be just let's be let's be clear on it, just to know what the nature of the problem is. Um, but I think it looks pretty good. Anyway, I know you're gonna get there. Yeah. Oh, but please. <laughs> That's so cute. That was so like pointed. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was really cute. I can't believe that it's already May. No. It's killing me. Yeah, I know. Fast. I'm going to have to go. This is as far as I got. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Oh, lovely. Are you doing watercolor, Sandra? Or yes. Ink? Watercolor. Oh, very God, very you I just want to commend you. You have come so far. Yes. No, not really. it's amazing. It's amazing. Hold it up again. I want everybody to see this. Look at that beautiful work. She's it's working beautiful. with color and her own kitty. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Wonderful work. Oh, Wonderful Thank you. Work. I better wrap up because my shift is oh, starting oh. in 10 minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss your work. All right. If so, it's not dry, if you've painted it, I'll see you guys soon. You can buy Sandra. We'll see you soon. Uh, Bye, Sandra. We have one of these in my house. You know, it's supposed to be for, I love that it says Revlon on it. It's supposed to be for, of course, drying your hair. Um, I don't use it to dry my hair, but I do use it to dry my painting. So if you have one of these, you can dry it. I'm going to mute myself because it's a very annoying noise.
We do have 10 minutes left in class. So my question is, do we have time to go forward on this or should we stop the painting here and go, does, I mean, I guess those of you who are following this demo, Anna and Tella um, and, um, and maybe Anik, I can't remember. Um, do you want to go a little bit further? We've got, we don't have much time left. Um, so my question is how far are we here? Uh, we can go a little bit further if that's, uh, or th that would be fine with me. Okay, so I thought we might work on the eyes a little bit. Um, we've got green and orange. So we're going to keep these two. Up. My palette is blue it up. Let's get some viridian. I'm going to put some green on my palette. I'm using <laughs> Viridian green. Mm -hmm. Dark green. If you don't have it, you can sort of, you know, try put all the greens that you have on your palette. And I'm going to use a little bit of yellow, cadmium yellow. Here. So we're going to continue on with our kind of small Notice that if I just use straight green, that's not the color, right? I need to mix my green with two colors. It's a touch of the dark Let me give me a little bit on this side too. So you'll see that there is, um, and so I'm lightening this green, red, and yellow mixture with white. And I'm putting that kind of around the bottom here. There is, by the way, a slightly darker green it's a shadowy green and white kind of here over the top edge same over here so i get that by just mixing more dark green in with red
right now this looks kind of weird, right? Because they're sort of solid lines. And then what we're gonna do with these three piles is we're gonna go back and forth to create what we call a soft edge. So we don't wanna lose our dark green, but can you see how I'm softening the dark edge by running, putting some lighter green onto my paintbrush and brushing it in at the top of the darker colors. You may have to go back and forth and do this a couple times, right? You might learn. And of course, one of the other things I'm seeing is that I've got to get a darker iris. My iris dried a little bit lighter. So I'm mixing blue and burnt sienna to make it darker. Also, there's a few kind of dark lines here. Is that your husband, Annika? <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get the cat to come eat. I know, I that. love the meowing sound. <laughs> it's very, like, it's cute. So we're trying to kind of, we haven't finished this, but we're taking our light color. And then if you lose your dark, you're going to go back and mix a little bit more dark, which is green, red, and a little bit of yellow and go back in. And you can also do the same thing. Do you want there to be a dark, a medium, and a light part of the eye, but the, 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 line between them is soft. I made this a little bit hard again. Now I'm gonna clean my brush off, add some white to this color and brush back in. So see as I kind of I'm almost tapping so that I don't see a firm line where my light transitions to dark. Sometimes I have to go back in and kind of load up my brush. And by the way, my now I don't, it's not really very watery. It's more, I'm just going, my brush is wet because I put it in the, but, but I'm mostly just loading paint onto the brush. I'm actually kind of piling paint onto the brush. And then there's a little tiny area of orange on the outside. So I'm gonna take some orange and a little white. Burnt sienna, well, not orange, burnt sienna. And I'm gonna blend that in around the edge here. of the iris. And the very last thing I'm gonna do, bring my brush out of water, and then I'm going to take a very, and this is, look at that, a very thick dot of white paint, and I'm gonna add in one, two, oh, maybe my paint's still too wet, dots of white on that eye. And look at what it does. So let's work a see if you can work on one eye. There's a we just went over a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, so just make an attempt at it. And next week we're gonna go over hard and soft edges, blending, all of the things that I just demonstrated very quickly. We're gonna talk about. So we'll leave this painting uh, uh, after you attempt an eye. 
I'll even keep it. I'll keep our class going another five or 10 minutes just so you can work on this. Because I don't really want to leave you. And I'm going to put you right up close so you can see the mark making. I thought I was going to finish this in one sitting, but apparently not. Don't you hate it when that happens? Yeah, I do. But I'm going to send you where I'm at. Okay. Uh, there it is. This is how far I came. Let's see. Oh, coming along very nicely. I definitely feel Julia in there. <laughs> yeah. She's an intense little sweetheart, isn't she? Yeah. A pink little nosy. A little pink nosy and her little slightly anxious expression. Yeah, always. Always a little anxious. But it was more fun to do your own cat. Let's see. It's okay. Uh, the beauty of paint is that we can cover up anything with more paint. The beauty yes. of acrylic paint. Don't worry if you mess it up. We can totally fix it. Actually, the more layers, the better. Yeah. So don't panic if we can't quite. So here's, a, here's the kind of first level of the eye. It's kind of the edges are hard. This one is the second. I've softened the edges by brushing lighter green, red, yellow mixes into darker green, red, yellow mixers, and then added the highlights, darkened the iris and added the highlights. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, there you go, Ani. What color did you use for glazing? Uh, the, one, the one that you said. So it was the cobalt. Cobalt. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, I just did, did not manage to remove all the uh, glaze from the brighter parts. So I actually went with that. Yeah, <laughs> and I like simply it. covered them. Right oh, parts goodness. again. <laughs> These are fabulous, and I basically think this is. It's so cute. It's really cute. It's absolutely adorable. I love it. I absolutely it, love the it. only thing that sticks out is the eye on the baby goat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I haven't touched it yet. I just, I okay. just actually did the left eye of the mama goat. Yeah. It's almost, almost, and uh, <laughs> two more, two more to go. Okay, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's really gorgeous. Thank Good you. Job. I'm, they're really Thank cute. You. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I have two others, uh, the one from the previous year and, two, and one from the two years ago, and I'm thinking that I'm going to make the big picture of all, of all three of those, just to, to have it as a you know, process making <laughs> or marking. Yeah, it's fun. That would be good. I'm going to leave you guys. I have to go back to work. All right, Diana. Great work today. Good job capturing Bye. your... Bye. And may, the... see... and may the fourth be with, be with you, of course. Is it raining? <laughs> is it yes, raining? it is. It, 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 it right. is the Star Wars day. <laughs> so uh, here is the funny thing. I 
I had my wedding anniversary a week ago. Both, both me and Frank forgot it. Oh, that was <laughs> he remembered today. At least he remembered today. I'm uh, putting this down because I want to see how Anna and Tella are doing. Tella and daughter. Wait, oops. Ah, okay. 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 That's, it looks uh, kind of... Uh, in progress, um, in progress. So a couple of things. Progress. <laughs> I'm working on the eyes because they look really flat right now. Of course. They do everything, close, aren't they? Everything should look flat right now because you haven't gotten any. I'm going to oh, get. The eyes are too close, aren't they? Yes. I'm going to give you two pieces of advice, Tilla. Yeah. One is that you have put the iris in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. Um, you have the iris, it's taking up too much space and it's in the center. Mm -hmm. You have it in the center. The iris of each, sorry, the pupil. The pupil, I was like confused. Yeah, okay, so the pupil, yeah. Each cat is a little bit to the left. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see the very top edge of it. It's too, You have it too big. So, um, mm -hmm. So what you need to do is go over with green paint mm -hmm. and shape it. I'll show you how that looks. You're just going to go over with your green paint mm -hmm. like this. We're really at the end of class, which is why I probably should have worked. Okay. Yeah, you're right. There's space. The iris is above the pupil. Yeah. Iris is. So say I'm going to, here, I'm just going to do this, right? You need mm -hmm. to move it. Oh gosh. Oh that eye was so bad. Over. Oh that eye was so pretty and perfect. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. <laughs> yep, yep. And that's why I did that to show you how much you can change things. Mm -hmm. Watch me. It's really over here. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna take some of my green, my darker green, which is red, green, and a little yellow. I'm going to go back in and I'm covering over. So it's really small. The other thing is your eyes are a little bit too much like this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right? So to fix that, I'm going to go over, I'm going to reshape. Mm hmm. Right. It's so going to be very easy for that to happen. Yeah. There should be one eye space in between each eye. One eye space in between the eyes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Sure. Oh, I see. I thought when you said the eyes were too close, I thought, oh, okay, well, that's a structural problem. There's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> There's everything you can do about that. What you need to okay. do. Is here, I'll show you again. I'm going to do it again just so you can see. So your eyes are doing this. Yeah. Right? Yes, they are a little bit. Now yeah. I just go back over to the orange and blue. Cover it up and reshape it. I can reshape it. Same over here. I'll do it over here. You've got this going here. Right? There yeah. Going. Like that. You've got all this stuff there like that. In reality, it's kind of more like this. Mm -hmm. Right? So everything can be reshaped. Yeah. So for the dark color, you are using burnt sienna and blue. So say that again, blue and burnt sienna. Blue and burnt sienna. And for the eye color, it was uh, yellow and green and red. And then okay. a little bit of white to lighten it around the outside edge. I'm going to go over all of that. I'd rather you just fix your painting, your drawing. Yeah. Right? So what you just did is you included this part as part of the eye. You forgot about this whole thing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Really what happened in both cases, you just kind of filled the whole thing with green. But so all you really need to come back here and reshape that. 
Yeah. And I will be able to bring this eye back. We're going to review eyes again. So don't try to get the final eye. Try to like get your shape and finish your shape. But we, we do your shapes here so that yeah. the, the eyes are kind of the right shape with the dark and the green. And then we will go back over this and do it again. Um, I love Anna. Go ahead and show me what you got. I'm going to do you similar. You've got to bring in a little bit more dark here, right? You brought your green in a little too much. Have you looked at the, can you see here? Here, sorry. If you look here, you'll see that the green is much, there's much more dark here. You have brought your green all the way to the edge and kind of minimize your dark. There's a real big dark triangle here right now. Mm -hmm. That's as much a part of the eye as the eye itself. Okay. A little bit on this side. So that's all I would say. Nice work. Um, so reshape using your green and your 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 blue. And uh, we have gone 15 minutes past class time. So I think this is also a good time to end uh, don't worry, we will fix everything. Not uh, does your daughter want to just show it up really quick? Hold it. Uh, let's see, like this. So, yeah, you want to make sure, my sweet. I see what you're doing there. That's not I a bad strategy, but I want. Bye. So I want you to pay attention to how big this shape is versus this shape. Cause I, I think you've moved, you've kind of uh, uh, moved off a little bit, right? Like you've gotten too far, too big. You've kind of moved a little bit too far this way. So pay attention mm. to how much white space is really here. Mm. For that, and otherwise you're in good shape. We will pick up next week. Yeah, and also you put your irises in the middle. Sorry, your pupils in the middle. They are not in the middle. They're a little bit to the left. Mm -hmm. So it may seem like a small thing, but those are the things that really have to do with capturing, um, with capturing re reality, right? Like mm -hmm. is seeing these shifts in the shape. Anyway, I think you guys did great. I think you did absolutely brilliant considering this was your first class. And uh, I bet you your classmates will agree. Do you all agree? Yeah. <laughs> Anna, Anna has a lot to be proud of. She got out of her bathroom and <laughs> Ani, good recruiting. We're happy to Attila to us. I'm assuming that. You know, uh, I have a very simple trick. I just put one of my paintings on a, on, on basically as a wallpaper on a desktop, and everyone asks at some point. So, you know, marketing. <laughs> Kelly, it's great to have you join us. I'm delighted. I, lo I, I love this. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll... Yeah, your brain is going to be blown up. Mm. <laughs> In a good way. In a good way. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. I look forward to that. Um, <laughs> so great work today, ladies. Uh, we'll see you all again next week or before if you decide to come yes. on the weekend. We'll see okay. you later. Good work. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Bye.